Thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video, I share with you my techniques and tips on how I created the skin tone for this portrait. Be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Right, just starting off with putting a centre point in the middle of my board and the same with the reference image. And then from there I'm, I'm using sort of angles, imaginary angles, to find the shape. And I'm doing the overall shape to start with, using the edges of the actual board size as well. So I'm using that as well as a centre point and getting a rough idea where the line of the nose going through the centre of the portrait and then I'm measuring the middle. Normally it's just where the eyes is, so I'll put a line there and then from your nose to your eyebrows is usually about the same. So I'm putting that in. What I did, I decided to actually do the cross-reference with this, just putting the odd mark here and there just to give me the idea of the location of it. I want too far off actually with the guesswork with my eye, but um, it's just it's nice just to have that now and again just to um, get the accuracy. Right, just a quick recap on how I do the cross reference technique. Got my cursor, you can see it moving here. Corner of the mouth, then, so if we just want that measurement there, uh, you've got a dashed line which will give you the measurement on the width. And then you've got a dashed line here which gives you the measurement on the depth. Then it's just a case of popping that mark onto your board and then continuing then just doing the odd mark here and there just to locate certain areas. What I'll try and do is just do the odd mark and then more freehand. It's a good way of learning how to do freehand because you get used to seeing the shapes as what they are accurately. Uh, because sometimes, because the light and shade, it can throw the eye a little bit, and that's why sometimes it's hard to find the outline. Uh, but this is a good way to practice. I've got quite a few videos in my channel how to draw the outline freehand and cross reference, if you like to check those out. I'll put a couple of examples on the screen for you now, uh, but if you want to check those out at any of the video, you're welcome to. Just quickly running through the outline then. Uh, I put the highlights of the eyes in there just to help me to sort of connect to the energy. In fact, what I do is bring that reference image inside my heart. So I'll, I'll let it come into me rather than me going outside to draw it. Because if you go too far outside to draw it, it's tunnel vision. If you connect to your heart while you're drawing, you get that sort of free flow in feel into it it just happens um, so I'm just putting the odd mark here and there and then just outlining it freehand uh, the more freehand you can do the better really um, but for the face the nose and the mouth and everything I just use the ruler just to get that accuracy there for this portrait Here's a selection of pencils I'll be using for the underdrawing. They're mainly sort of chalky pencils like Carbothella or Contia Paris pencils. Ghosting the image out first then with the Faber-Castell kneadable eraser. Putting the white down first and all this is really, this underdrawing, is to change the outline and create a little bit of form so you're altering things. I'm not really interested in getting the value right, the chroma, the edges. That all comes with the, the details and rich colour stage. It's just a matter of just making sure the drawing is right and the placement. Why you've got this light pastel going down, it's easy to move. Just using brown and blue for the shadows and just getting the basic sort of idea where things are so I'm just putting a little bit of pigment there just a bit of red around the eye there just to sort, sort of help me find the edges of the eye and it's all in preparation really um, for the iris it's a combination of yellow ochre, blue lemon yellow and a bit of brown just to create the colour one I'm looking for 
It's just a, an idea, really. So this is a stage where you can practice and, and experiment with colour a little bit as well. Uh, but like I say, I'm not really interested in getting that colour correct at the moment. But you can play and see what works. Now, for the white of the eyes, I'm using blue and orange. That creates natural shadows and a little bit of red here and there. Just laying in the white now first, just light pressure where it's mid-tone, a bit more pressure where it's highlight, and just getting that pigment, just filling that tooth up a little bit. What will this do then will help the subsequent layers uh, be easier to actually apply them because you've got that little bit of pigment there. If you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Now for the under eye I'm using brown and red for the shadows and then occasionally green and red but the subtleties will be put in later in the other stages but for the underdrawing the brown and the red sort of works well just to get that structure. Now at this point I'm not using any blenders at all it's all pencil over pencil just keeping everything nice and loose and just being aware of the energy of the person even at this stage I'm connecting, letting it flow. I'm not thinking too much about how to do things, it's just happening. And the more you can relax and the more you can connect to the reference image, the more it just sort of flows from you. And all I can say is just relax, try and keep loose and spontaneous. Uh, and this is done by just connecting to your heart, like I mentioned, and not overthink things. And just get that pigment down and just move things around. Just have fun, really. It's all about having fun, moving these colours around, getting the shapes and the idea where these sort of highlights are and mid-tones and shadows. And it's just preparing the way for all those lovely rich colours which I'll be putting on soon in this video. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my patrons for all their wonderful support every month. I can't thank you enough. It really means the world to me. If you're interested in and considering joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please check out the link in the description below. This portrait will be on Patreon all in real time, video and audio, so you'll be able to see and hear as I progress moment by moment. So it will be on there at some point. Uh, but there's loads of videos on there now and it's only a very small amount each month and you get access to everything in the library so please check that out the link is in the description below now i'm going in the direction of the lips with the mark making with the white and then just glazing over them with a the warm red to start with and then in the shadows there i'm using the cold red and green uh, and then just glazing over with a few colors and just basically getting that form in there. Now for the rich colour stage I'm using these pencils to start with. These are Caran Dash ones. They're more rich in pigment so it makes it more vibrant than the skin tone. But first of all I'm using the Faber Castell white which is a very, a very vibrant white and putting that in the whites of the eyes to start with and just re-glaze over and then what you'll find it's fresher then. Using these vibrant and fresh colors underneath and then reglazing over the top it makes a massive difference now in some cases i can use the pencils i've already used by just adding more pigment to create that richness so it's a combination of the caran dash and the other pencils i used previous for the underdrawing but it all helps to create that texture Slowing the pace down now so you can have a closer look. I'm using a burnt sienna around the pupil. That's a little tip there because it creates more of a aliveness, even if it's not in the reference. Just adding that little bit into the eyes just makes a difference. Using lemon yellow now to create that glow. What happens with ye lemon yellow, it gives that sort of zinginess, that vibrancy. So anything that's got a lot of chroma, just adding that a bit of lemon yellow just makes all the difference. Now I'm using the blue here just to subtle those values now. So it's all about getting the values right and the vibrancy. Now I'm minimizing the details I'm putting in in the rich color stage because it's still like a block in. Uh, it's just getting the colors more correct with the value and the chroma. 
but all the subtlety details you'll see me do later on in this video. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends. It would mean so much to me as this would help my channel to grow. I just added these two dark areas here just to give me an idea then of what values will be in the skin tone. So it gives me something to compare against. So it's just now again, it's about putting more pigment down and then just glazing over with similar colours and also with the richer colours as well. So it's just a combination of all of them really. Now I'm using additional pencils now which are pre-mixed pencils. This one's a pink white I'm using then glazing over with the red and the yellow ochre uh, to get that richness. Now I'm feeling in the reference how the texture is and I'm just letting the pencil just move that way so I'm doing small circles with dashes just feeling my way through and trying to create texture. Now I'm using a pre-mixed pencil which is 5% flesh colour. You've just got to be patient and build up these layers and the colours will eventually come together. I'm using dark green and red uh, for the shadows here and a bit of brown and then just blending them with a earbud just to get that subtlety and then using olive green here so I'm using a combination of all these different pencils and again it's just a block in the details will be in later on in this video as you'll see how I do that but it's just a case now of just getting things feeling more and more towards what they should be You just got to be patient and build them up slowly but surely and just be aware of everything all at once so uh, try and compare one shade against the other now for the highlight there I used the Rembrandt white because it created more of a rich vibrancy and then glaze over the top and move it around with the other pencils for shadows I'm using dark green and red on also brown just to get that sort of depth of shadow If you would like to know more about how to create shadows for skin tone, please check out this free class. So there's a link in the description below. Now the shadows work on landscapes, whatever I'm doing, animals, wildlife. It's the same sort of principle, so it's worth checking out and it's free, so you're welcome to it. So please check out the link in the description below after this video. Now there's reflected light coming from the actual ginger hair. So I'm putting the red, lemon yellow and I'm using a bit of burnt sienna in there as well because that's what I'll be using for the hair. So I've put that into the skin in preparation. Done the same thing here with the ear, just putting that rich colour, that 5% skin tone colour down first, then glazing with the red and green. Dark green and red for the shadow there from the earring. And then basically just building up that texture, small circles, keep working it in backwards and forwards. It just take time, you just got to be patient with it. And But each layer you see adds that subtlety. Now I'm using a earbud there as well just to soften the grain a little bit and then just adding that texture back in. Now I'm working in the white to get the subtlety there and then just glazing over with more pigment now with the red and the green to desaturate it because when you put the red down first it's too glowy so you have to subtle it down by adding that green because it's complementary. Now don't put every little sort of mark the same it's my suggestion at the end of the day it's, it's a piece of art so it's not a replica so it's a just suggestion here and there it's your interpretation of what you're actually viewing it's not a carbon copy so just relax and enjoy moving the colours around without getting too intense about trying to make it exactly the same as a reference image. Now the neck can be quite challenging to do. Um, with this reference image it's quite lighter than the actual face tone. Um, there's quite a lot of purples, blues, greens, there's all sorts of colours but what I say is always paint what you see and it just develops on its own without getting too wrapped up in the details. Right on with the detail stage now so uh, here I'm just putting in the eyelashes. I'm using brown to start with taking my time 
making sure that each stroke is right and very light pressures to start with because you can add more pigment when you're happy with the placement of it. Now detail stage it's all about moving the pigment what you've already put down there but subtling it up and getting more of a refined look to it. With the eyelashes on this side again I'm just doing very light pressures to start with and then what I'll do once I'm happy with that I'll go over in places with a bit of black uh, just to darken it up a little. Now this is a great tool to have in your kit it's a colour shaper it's a silicone tip so it's like using a brush you're just picking up pigment with this very fine point and moving pigment around it's very light pressure on it but it does make all the difference with the subtleties now I'm slowing it down to real time here so you can see my mark making and how subtle it does get and how you just use the side of the point of the pencil now this is flesh tint from the Caran d'Ache and very very small circles here because it's in the shadow area I'm using this darker pre-mixed colour With the lips here I'm adding that lemon yellow just to give it that zinginess and that vibrancy and using the pre-mixed pink white for the highlights and then just glazing over here and there and it's a case of really keep looking in the mirror and seeing it from a different angle and just sensing what needs to be changed now if it feels wrong if you get a feeling there's something not quite right work on it some more real time now to show you how I'm putting the frettles in now we have said really subtle with frettles I tend to use the olive green a bit of warm red and a bit of yellow ochre and then I just dab it with my finger uh, just to soften the edges of it uh, so you've got to be really really sort of gentle with this and not press on at all it's just just letting that pigment just fall off the pencil now I'm very aware at this stage, the detail stage, of how the edges feel. Some need to be softer, some needs to be sharper. I'm aware of the temperature and also the value. So I'm squinting my eyes for the value, sensing the temperature of it and changing everything accordingly really. Um, just using the Carbothello White to blend with as well because that's a really good pencil for blending just very light pressure and then adding pigment on the top changing the subtle values again uh, putting the odd sort of frettle in here and there it's just a case of just going round everywhere and just getting the overall balance and try and create that oneness feel to the portrait Thank you so much for watching the video right till the end. Now if there's any questions at all, please leave a comment below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, this is part one, so part two will be coming out shortly and that will be the hair and the background. So be sure to check that out when it's available. Now if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I really appreciate that, it helps the channel a lot. In the meantime, if you want to see more of my work, please check out this video here.